Discuss the health care ruling and the riots in Egypt. Is one of the few politicians in America who cares about freedom and responsible government. Indiana Republican governor and potential presidential candidate Mitch Daniels. Governor Daniels, welcome to Freedom Watch. Your Honor, how many cups of coffee do you have this afternoon? You're wired up tonight. You know I'm always like this. <laughs> All right. Uh, a lot to talk to you about. First, your, uh, your thoughts on the ruling by Judge Vinson in validating Obamacare. Indiana was one of the plaintiffs in that case, so you must be pretty pleased. Very pleased and uh, hopeful that it will be sustained. You know, you're a real lawyer, and, and uh, I'll show you what a lousy lawyer I am. I thought enumerated powers meant you had to, they had to be spelled out in the document somewhere, and I sure didn't find anything in the, as often as I've looked in our Constitution that talks about uh, the power to make people buy a product they don't want. So I, it has always seemed to me that this was a very legitimate uh, claim, and I'm not surprised to see uh, uh, more than one judge now uh, indicate uh, uh, the same. Well, your own understanding of the Constitution, Governor, is precisely that which was articulated by Judge Vincent today. What you said in about three sentences, typical, it took this judge 78 pages to say, but he basically said the Congress can't make you eat broccoli so that you'll stay healthy. It can't make you buy health insurance because the Constitution never authorized the Congress to force individuals to do things like this. Nor can it make the states, like Indiana, raise taxes and tell them how to spend the money that was raised. Well, it made good sense to me, and as I say, uh, uh, I, I, ha I personally believe that the, the law is very uh, flawed, uh, fundamentally uh, a mistake for the country, but setting all that aside, these constitutional issues, it's, it's just really, uh, to me, uplifting to see them uh, raised uh, so seriously and, uh, and treated so uh, uh, so seriously, it's been a while since those principles have, uh, have been expressed as they are in these uh, debates. The, uh, let, let's move to Egypt, uh, if we could. It it's, seems like uh, President Mubarak will be gone soon uh, as a result of these enormous, unfortunately tragic, uh, deadly and destructive, but enormous demonstrations in the streets. What's your take on this, uh, Governor? Should we welcome... Uh, a dictator with whom, with whom we've done a lot of business going away? Should we welcome someone who was educated in America and sounds like he would be more open to our liberal uh, institutions? Or should we fear that whoever would replace President Mubarak might be more brutal and suppress more people's freedoms? Oh, first of all, uh, if, if my friend John Bolton acknowledges that uh, he is very uncertain about this, then I'm not embarrassed to tell you I am too. Um, and um, uh, I believe that quite often uh, our government pretends both to more knowledge than it has and pretends to more influence than it has. And I, uh, I think they've been properly circumspect so far. Uh, I'm a water's edge uh, guy when it comes to foreign policy, uh, Andy, and so uh, uh, I think that we should support the um, direction that the administration has taken and and so far, I think their, their policy of modesty is uh, probably uh, about all that's available to us. You have uh, balanced a budget in the most difficult economic times uh, to the point where the government of the state of Indiana, and I'm not just saying this because you and I went to school together and have known each other for 40 years. I'm saying it because it's true. is recognized as a model government throughout the country. If you were to be asked to balance a federal budget, for example, what would you think of the proposal of Governor of uh, Senator Rand Paul uh, of Kentucky, who in one uh, stroke wants to stop all foreign aid and wants to cut $500 billion from the domestic parts of the budget? Would you find those proposals attractive, Governor Daniels? In large part, I would. I do think we're going to need to see a dramatically uh, downsized the federal budget, that is the operating budget, um, I rather like the idea of, as a starting point that's uh, gone around, of moving back at least uh, two or three years. Nobody I know thought the federal government was too small in 2007 or 8. And I think they ought to extract that as uh, the, the price of uh, any agreement on this uh, uh, debt ceiling business that's coming up next. Now, what I don't know that, uh, it, and it may be there, but what I don't know that is in Senator Paul's uh, suggestion so far is the heart of the matter, and that's a uh, new compacts in the Social Security and Medicare system for the younger people at least, not those who are in the system now, but those right. who are coming along and paying all the bills. 
That's where the big problem is, and, um, and no uh, proposed solution uh, to the uh, debt crisis we're facing that, that omits the big changes there is complete. You, uh, you know that in the, in the Bush years, George W. Bush, the debt was added to by $2 trillion in eight years. President Obama has added nearly $4 trillion in just two years. Should we just draw the line and say enough is enough? State it differently. Should we not vote to raise the debt ceiling and tell the government of, of the United States of America to live within its means like the government of Indiana does? Well, I believe that they should extract about eight pounds of flesh for any vote uh, uh, to pay the, government, the, the nation's bills. You know, dating back to Alexander Hamilton and uh, the founding of the Republic, uh, living up to your debts, even if they were mistakenly accrued, is a pretty important principle. And uh, you know, this debt ceiling vote is really uh, retrospective. Uh, the damage that it's uh, dealing with has already been done, but it's a great moment of leverage to make a radical difference in the spending of this country and the kind of things that Senator Paul and others have suggested. And I think it ought to be seized as that kind of opportunity uh, to uh, start the heavy lifting that uh, needs to happen to get the federal government to, uh, a size we can afford. You will uh, soon finish your eighth year in office. Uh, any trips to New Hampshire planned? No, I've turned down a lot of those. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, How about uh, Iowa? You know, I'm really just, I'm really, at, at, I'm just entering my seventh year in office, and I've got a lot on the plate here, and uh, very productively, uh, or at least passionately occupied in trying to uh, transform public education and our criminal justice system, and, uh, and, and today get ready for what apparently be a heck of a of a tough ice storm. So uh, I'm I'm pretty, bu I'm busy enough with that. Governor Daniels, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Always fun. Now.